I'm Tom Riach, promoting successful business experts, connecting people throughout the world from my podcast studio in Brazil. Joining us today from Philadelphia, Nick Jane, CEO of IdeaScale and leading expert on how to make innovation happen. So Nick, why do large organizations struggle with innovation? Thanks for the uh, uh, thanks for having me on your show. So I think three things that, that large organizations always struggle with. Number one, they're good at what they do, but therefore it's become it becomes more difficult to do something new, right? When you're already very good at what you do. Number two is they create really perverse incentives for employees not to innovate. Ah. Um, and that's why employees end up leaving to go to startups or go to smaller, more nimble companies because they're now, they're incentivized to in fact not innovate within their large organization. We can get more into that. Mm -hmm. um, number three is there's less hunger. Just fundamentally, if you're a large organization, you've already made it, right? You are, if you're the CEO of a billion dollar organization or a government agency that's got a $10 billion budget, you've made it. There's, there's less of that hunger that, hey, someone's out to get your lunch. Um, but obviously, if you're not hungry, eventually that comes back to bite you. And we're seeing that in, you know, kind of Intel and Boeing these days where they were less hungry than some of their peers for the last decade or so. And it it's took a little while to play through. But now we're seeing the unfortunate consequence of their lack of innovation over the last few decades. Well, your number three actually uh, struck me because I saw you have a history of uh, rags to riches. And what you just mentioned, a lot of corporations have the same start. And what we're seeing today, and I agree with you, we're, we're, we're seeing the riches go back to rags. Yeah, what, what's that old, uh, uh, that, that old joke? Shirt sleeves to shirt sleeves in three generations, right? <laughs> that, you know, one generation of, uh, makes a ton of money, the second generation has a bit of the drive, but by the third, your grandchildren become like trust fund kids or whatever. The same is true with cor organizations and corporations. All corporations, whether you're talking like IBM or let's use uh, NVIDIA, right? Or TSMC, these major semiconductor companies, they were like random ideas started by somebody like 20, 30 years ago. Right. And then it took them all, but, but they just kept, they had that constant hunger and drive and discipline over decades. And now they are trillion dollar organizations today. Right. But they all started, as you said, at the same place, they were an idea in someone's garage or bedroom, or uh, somebody was talking with their wife or husband and or buddy. And that's how these ideas originated and they rose. And if they didn't maintain that hunger, they eventually fall. So how do you help organizations keep the fire burning? Sure. Or, or add fuel so, to the fire, yeah. which is better, right? Yeah, we, we don't light the fire. If an organ, that, that's a much bigger problem to solve, right? Mm -hmm. Once you have a fire to be innovative, our technology helps you actually achieve that goal. So think of it like, you know, the, the analogy I'd use is someone wanting to get in shape, right? Mm -hmm. We can't, we don't motivate you to, the, with that internal inspiration to be, go get in shape. But once you say, hey, I'm going to be in shape, we provide you with the, the machines, the tool, the technology, the runners, to help you achieve that goal once you've acknowledged that that is a goal you want to achieve. Or even corporations who have started the, the path on innovation, say, several years ago. And innovation innovates itself. It just feeds on itself. So innovation right. from yesterday is, is not innovation tomorrow. Yeah, so, so the joke I always use is like, yeah, well, actually, that's exactly it. That like in innovation becomes anachronistic very quickly. Mm -hmm. um, and, or, and alternatively, if you're not innovating every day, just remember your competitors are. Right. Right. Or somebody's thinking about something you haven't thought about. And mm -hmm. so that's where. So, so you, you, you have face to face meetings, you do everything virtually. How do you, how do you work? Sure. So our organization is global and distributed for the most part. So I have about 100 employees now across eight or so countries. Mm -hmm. And then we do have a couple of offices in Washington, D.C., in India, in Bangladesh, and a few other places. Um, uh, Japan as well, I think. Um, so in terms of our clients, again, we, we're not a consulting firm. We focus really on, we're a B2B SaaS solution. So we are providing software mm -hmm. uh, to these clients and that can obviously be done pri remotely, right? We don't have to go install anything on right. anybody's desktop anymore. It's all in the, it's all in the cloud now. Um, and we obviously meet some of our clients. We hold live events. We're having one in Washington, DC in two weeks uh, focused on our public, on our federal government clients. But really most of our work is done remotely because that's how good software companies run. So how can how can our listeners or corporations or somebody just thinking of having an idea and taking it forward find you? 
Sure. So our website is ideascale.com. Our software is completely free forever for large organizations that are, or for, sorry, for organizations that are below a hundred people. Mm. So if you're an individual entrepreneur or small or medium business, or even like a large business with a team of like 20 people, you can use my software completely for free. So free. go to ideascale.com. Free, free, like free? free, free, nothing, nothing. Don't charge you a penny. You don't have to give it. You can sign up with your Gmail address or your work email address. If you're below a hundred people on your team or organization, totally free. Literally go to ideascale.com, click get started free. You'll be up and running on uh, within, within a minute. Wow. And how can they find no you, you as a person, Nick? <laughs> Me as a person, uh, easiest way is LinkedIn. My name is Nick Jane. Uh, I, and I respond to 100% of messages. So feel free to DM me and I will respond back. Very good. Well, thanks for being here and thanks for sharing your story and your, your, your freebie. Thank you. Thank you so much for having me, Tom. And again, I encourage everyone to check it out. Our software is definitely best in class uh, and we've been doing this for 15 years. So we are really good at what we do. Very good. Well, I have to admit that I think you are from everything that I've seen. That's why you're here. So we do, we just talk about successful business experts and you seem to be one. So thanks again for being here. Thank you, Tom. And again, for our listeners, it's Nick Jane, N-I-C-K, and the last name is J-A-I-N, Nick Jane. You'll find him on LinkedIn, and you'll also find the company, which is ideascale.com. Cafe Network is brought to us by Focus MI Market Intelligence, an agricultural market research specialist in Brazil. More information at focusmi.com. Talk to Tom, talk to the world. Thanks for listening to Cafe and Networking Podcast. 